Next, we head to Sigma Brewery in Houston's second ward. It's located along the light rail and tucked away down a small side street. It's a pretty inconspicuous building, but they're the only ones with the hearse parked out back, so somehow, I doubt you'll miss them. Sigma Brewery opened its doors in September of 2016. It's got that edgy industrial vibe with just the right amount of heavy metal coming through the speakers. If you're still wondering, no. Sigma Brewery has nothing to do with anything Greek life related. We're, we're pretty far away from being uh, frat brothers. Um, and we, we'd looked for quite a while for a name and nothing had stuck really. Like, there were a couple that were okay, but nothing really felt right at all. We've been working for this thing for seven years, six, seven years, and um, just putting everything we had into it. And it was just kind of like, so like a, a summation, it's a summation of us. This brewmance has been around since high school. And unsurprisingly, it was alcoholic fermentation that started it all. So we started brewing as kind of a way to, to get alcohol, I guess, <laughs> you know, before we were 21. And so you know, rather than going and like pay mystery somebody at the store, it was kind of like, well, we buy all the stuff to make it. So maybe we'll just figure out how to make booze and uh, started off making some really gross, disgusting <laughs> stuff. You know, it wasn't from, good beer. Definitely not good yeah. beer, but it was beer. We just kept on, yeah. you know, building recipes and playing with ingredients and doing it more for fun than anything else until, uh, I guess you moved out to California. Right? Yeah. And despite living in different states, they somehow mastered the art of long distance brewing. With me out in California, uh, we obviously visit each other as much as we could, but at the same time, we set up uh, brewing equipment that mimicked each other's setups. Uh, so even though we weren't living anywhere even remotely close to each other, we could still brew and develop recipes. So we were really kind of bonded by the, the experience of, of home brewing and, and brewing. And it, I, mean, I don't think it was before too long where you know, you get a little bit jaded with with your you know career choice, and and we were just like, all right, let's um, maybe let's get serious about this. You know. Eventually, they quit their corporate jobs, and Nick moved back to Houston to start the brewery. We had to work pretty hard at learning to do all the stuff ourselves. Right? We were going to do all of our own branding. We decided we were going to do all of our own brewing. We decided we were going to build the place ourselves, and. You know, you can only just like talk about that for, for so long and eventually got to a point where we're like, all right, what, what are we doing? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, are we going to get serious about this or are we not going to get serious about this? If you've ever dreamed of opening a brewery with your best friend, that friendship better be rock solid because it takes an insane amount of hard work. So a typical brew day, we get in at 6 a.m. Uh, we'll have somebody as the brewer, somebody as the assistant brewer. First thing in the morning though, we gotta take temperature of everything. So grain, the equipment, our mash ton, all of that. Input that into all of our calculations and then we go from there. I'd like to think it's pretty just ritualized, you know, like I show up in the morning, I check, everything there is to check, all the gauges on everything, all the equipment, make sure everything's functioning okay. Once we get all that into the system, I'm up on the platform as the green's going into the mash tun, and then whoever's uh, running the mill is going and putting all the grain into that. So right now we are mixing our water, we're setting our foundation water, and one improvement that we've made to the brew house we used to manually mix the water to get it to our strike water temperature, and we got really sick of doing that, so Matt automated the valve. It allows us to concentrate on other things during mashing. The days are always different. They're weird and strange and meandering. It's kind of what makes it beautiful, I guess. It's weird working with, like, your best friend. Most of the people that I've worked with in my life is just like, oh yeah, you're all right. 
So, but at the end of the day, you don't want to hang out with a whole lot of them or anything like that. He's the boss here. And I mean, he keeps the wheels on and it's the most rewarding day when it's, you know, Matt comes in, he's in a great mood. Nick would probably say that I'm like, I just get too into it, maybe a little bit too intense sometimes. I just like, I want to get stuff done. He keeps all of us in line and I mean, this, this place is what it is because of, you know, him. I mean, he is the structure, he's the, he's the backbone of the company. So I, I think we kind of serve to temper each other somewhat. It's a Saturday, and it's one of those breezy blue sky days in Houston. It's the type of day Houstonians really tend to appreciate. It shouldn't take you long to notice, but there's a doomsday wrestling wall of fame in the tap room and a wrestling ring in the warehouse. So that's Doomsday Wrestling's ring. Our first employee at the brewery, a guy named Adam, yeah. who we've known for many, many years. We actually reconnected with him after quite a few years came yeah. off of college and everything at a Doomsday Wrestling show. Doomsday Wrestling was something that we saw, like they were a show. We went and just because we're like, oh, this is, this is, this could be cool, you know? And saw Adam there uh, and turned out to be just unique and different. And it was super funny. It's just comedy wrestling. They don't take themselves seriously. And we had heard that, you know, Doomsday was looking for a rehearsal space. And we like what they do. Like, they don't care about the appearances. I mean, most people go like, I don't want to go see a comedy wrestling show wrestling. Like, we just shared, 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 a, uh, I guess, a passion for our respective yeah. paths there, like kindred spirits. They were super <laughs> dedicated to their craft, which is comedy wrestling. Yeah. And as we're, you know, dedicated to our craft, which is making beer. And so I just, you know, reach out to them and I was just like, look, man, set your ring up in our brewery. We're tiny. We don't need it right now. And, you know, we'll just keep it there until we need the space. We've just, we, we had a, a plan for this. I mean, like we want to make, you know, good, clean beers. We want to experiment. We want to experiment with ingredients and flavors and, and, and kind of step outside of some of the norm. Yeah. Like that beer that he's, he's drinking right there, 829.97, is like the only IPA of its kind that, that uses those hops in the quantities that we use them and has the flavors that that thing has. Yeah, there's a lot of hops in it, but it's it's aggressively bitter, but at the same time, it has some sweetness to it. A lot of tangerine type flavors, but we use a lot of Sriracha Ace hops in it, which is an American style of hops, but it has just a bizarre, unique character. So women flavors, that kind of thing, but also some dill, yeah. which, can turn some people off to it. It's like you're typically in one camp or the other, like not really neutral on it. It either tastes like a pickle to you or you just love the flavor and it adds, yeah, adds an interesting, you know, layer layer of flavor and character to it, so. As a result, it's, it's a little bit polarizing, but, but because of that, like that beer has this like weird cult following. Like people get really excited when, when we when we put it back on. They're not just passionate about brewing craft beer and blasting heavy metal. Sigma Brewing represents much more than that. It's in the attitude of what they do and who they are. They're all about keeping it real. It's an extension of everybody here in the same way that we're named for the Sigma because it's the summation of everything that we put into it. it. The personality's become something more. It's become everybody. It's the summation of everyone here. This is us, you know? Yeah. 